Well, today we're looking after the Jeep again. Uh, there is a bit of a knock. It actually sounds like a rod knock, but it disappears about a minute after start. Um, drive off, put a bit of throttle on, and a minute later it's, it's gone. So I don't, I don't really know what it is. A rod knock would have low oil pressure or lower oil pressure and uh, it would take considerably longer to build the oil pressure up. Um, piston slap is one, uh, but apparently a common thing in Cherokees is the um, flex plate. So that's what we're going to check today. I uh, don't know if it's cold enough. Uh, let's just fire it up. It's quiet now, I can put it in gear. I'm in gear on the brake, it does not rattle. There is a bit of a... There is a bit of a rattle up there. The usual clonk of the Cherokee engine. Apparently it only happens if it's stone cold. I was just driving two miles and it's not there at all. So basically <clears throat> from cold start you can't hear it in idle but as soon as you put it in gear and put a little bit of throttle on it knocks really bad and uh, again after a mile it's gone. So I'm not entirely sure what that is. We'll find out. I couldn't hear anything, I checked it with screwdriver, no particular knock or pling or whatever, it's it's as quiet as the Cherokee engine can be, apart from a little blowing exhaust here, but uh, that's about it. So let's get underneath and get the inspection plate off and see what the bolts are doing. Well that's the inspection plate here, that's the starter motor. Uh, Apparently the starter has to come out to get the plate off, which is a bit weird because normally it says it doesn't need to, but that's what it is. We need to get that plate off. Apparently, I know it's hard, hardly visible, apparently the starter doesn't need to come out because the plate is splitted here, so that's good. But I think we're lucky because we found one loose bolt here. These are, hopefully that's visible, these slotted bolts there, these are the flex plate bolts. And this one is completely loose. So. I think we found our knocking. So we're gonna take those bolts out and uh, lock tight it in because otherwise they may come loose again. Hopefully the flex plate isn't cracked or so. I haven't seen anything by now. We'll turn it around and have a look. But uh, it was Oh, it's it's half a turn, I would say. Well, let's check the thread how it looks like. But uh, yeah, it lasted for a while. It's 140,000 miles. But apparently, that's a common fault on these chips. So I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a relieved because everything else would have dropping the pan and looking after the bearings and check the piston clearance and things like that which uh, I don't want to do right now but it's gonna happen at some time because it's 140,000 miles probably a little bit more because my speedo gear is a bit low so 
because I've got bigger tires. Anyway, anyway, uh, I'm gonna turn that around and uh, take it out and have another shot. And that's where the bolt sits. And that's the bolt. It looks, it looks good actually. You can only see a bit of rubbing on the surface here. So the thread is fine. It didn't come out far. So we give that a little bit of a clean, put some Loctite on, put it back in and check the other ones. The first one was tight, just this one. And uh, there are two more to go, there are four in total. So, there are 15 millimeter, maybe something imperial, but a 15 millimeter spanner fits. We'll come back with some Loctite. So we found the third one, it was loose as well. And uh, we did the same, Loctite. And uh, torqued it as best as we can. To lock the flywheel, I'll use one of these here, which luckily fits here with the bolt. And uh, that locks the flywheel so you can actually torque it down. So let's let's check the last one and see what it what it looks like. This one was not as loose as the other one. It was only a quarter of a turn loose. Uh, and as far as I can see, I can't see any cracks in the f in the flex plate, which is good. So let's carry on here. Turning the engine over can be a bit of a pain because you can't get down to the crank pulley. But luckily, the uh, the alternator has a 22 millimeter nut. So just get a spanner on it and turn it. Obviously there's a ratio, but it helps. Just do four turns or so and you're a quarter on the, on the crank. Depends on if you got a if you got a guard underneath or something. I've got some rubber underneath so I can't get there from the bottom. So I just turn it with the alternator. Works fine. Just don't forget to take the spanner out before you start it, otherwise uh, it's going to be a mess. And don't forget to disconnect the battery negative. Well, it turned out, apart from one, which is this one, all were loose between a quarter and half a turn. Uh, perhaps a little bit more than the last one. So that explains the rattle. I think I'm lucky, I can't see any cracks in the flex plate. So I'm just gonna lock tie the last one as well, just to make sure they all got locked tight on it and then we put it back together and give it a try. So we, we all done. All four bolts got locked tight on it. Torqued up and uh, get the locker out, put the inspection plate back and see how it sounds. So everything is back together. No nuts and bolts left so we probably fitted everything. I just noticed my rear engine seal probably needs replacing but you can do that actually with the engine in place. It's a fairly clever design. The, the ring is actually split in half so you can take it out but I don't care at the moment. Uh, it's not too bad, but I have fun if it's getting worse. All right, let's get that off the ramp here and see what we have. I actually used the Scotch weld thread locker because that's medium string. The lock that I have is, is super string, and I don't really want that because at some point you might want to get them out. Don't forget your spanner on the alternator pulley, otherwise it clonks. Alright, so 
battery negative is back and let's see what it does. That's the job done. Alright, go for a test drive tomorrow. When I drive to work, we'll see what happens if it's cold. But uh, so far from the cheap. I think that was a successful repair. Thanks for watching. <laughs>